Graphing polynomials without calculus, part one. Uh, what you should know before you begin, okay? You should be able to sketch uh, the graph of power functions such as uh, y equals a and ax to the n power where n is a natural number and a is any real number. In other words, you should be able to graph things like uh, y equals negative 4x to the 12th power. You should know how to graph that. Very simple though because they're either e even powers are all done the same way and odd powers are all done the same way. <clears throat> you should be able to determine the symmetry of a function, uh, i.e. whether it's odd or even. <clears throat> You should be able to uh, factor polynomials. And lastly, you should be able to solve uh, factorable polynomial equations. So make sure you can do all this stuff. You might stop the um, video and take a look at these for a while. Let's make sure you can do these before you move on. Uh, the first uh, uh, function we're going to, polynomial function we're going to graph is y equals 2x to the fifth minus 8x to the third minus x squared plus 4. And I'm going to do this in a series of uh, steps. The first step we're going to do is uh, we're going to find the y-intercept. And of course, the way we do that is we, we set x to 0, don't we? So I'm going to put 0 in wherever there was an x. And uh, that'll mean that when that's true, y equals 4 in this case. So uh, 0, comma 4 is the uh, y-intercept. And the next thing we need to be able to do is the x-intercept. And in this case, we... Um, set y to 0 and solve for x. And here it's done here. Uh, it turns out uh, this one factors, and uh, but if it didn't factor or if you were lazy, you could always pop it in your calculator and use the equation editor and, uh, and, and find the answers. There's also a program called PolySolver that's in many calculators. And you could get the roots and uh, instead of going through this. But what I did was um, I, um, I looked at this and I said, okay, I'm going to group these two together and I'm going to group these two together. And out of this one, I can factor a 2x to the third, uh, leaving x squared minus 4 behind. And out of here, these last two, I can factor out uh, negative 1. And I notice in these two terms that we have a common factor. So I can factor that out and I end up with um, x squared minus 4. Uh, times 2x to the third minus 1, which factors again, right, into, this is a difference of squares, so we end up with these three factors, don't we, of this polynomial. So that allows us to uh, uh, find the uh, x-intercepts pretty easily. If I set each one of these factors to 0, um, I'll get, uh, we'll get these answers. In other words, we'll get these x-intercepts, 2, negative 2, and the cube root of 1 half, which is about uh, 0.79. Okay. In step three, um, the lead term test. This is a fairly sophisticated test, and uh, what it says is that in a polynomial, the first, the highest power, the lead term, is the one that dominates as x gets very, very big, and the other ones just kind of drop away in terms of importance. And so y will behave approximately like 2x to the fifth as x heads to either positive infinity or negative infinity. So this function is going to just turn into a simple power function eventually, or essentially this all is going to happen. And so that tells us an awful lot. That tells us how the function is going to behave as it gets, as x gets very large in either direction. Some, in some applications, that's really all you need to know is uh, what happens as x gets very, very large. So this is an important test. And uh, of course, we know how an odd power function goes. They all look like uh, x to the third power. In other words, they go to positive infinity this way. And as x gets big in this way, the, the y value goes to the negative infinity this way. And you should just sketch that. Of course, we don't know what happens around here. That's going to be the next big step is to um, find out what happens near 0. So um, after we do this, uh, we want to look at, uh, well, I can find it here. I hope I can find it. Yeah, here we go. Uh, what we want to do is uh, put our intercepts uh, on the axis here and um, uh, understand what's happening here. We're going to come down from way up here, right? And we're going to hit this x-intercept. We're going to go through. We're going to come up and go through and through. We don't know how high we're going to go, and then we're going to come back down and go this way. Oops, got it highlighted it there. And the reason I know that we're going through, by the way, the x-axis is that the powers that, if you go back here and look at the x-intercepts, 
at the factors from which we got the x-intercepts, we notice the power of each one is to the first power. That is, they're to odd powers. What that means if it's to an odd power is the sign will change when after the uh, particular factor uh, hits zero. If this were squared, then it would be a bouncing intercept. That is, it would hit the x-intercept and bounce. But because each one is to the one power, an odd power, it means that the function will change signs. And so I know that it's going to go through. Okay. That, that I know for sure. Okay, so I've got, I know what's going to happen. It's going to come down here. It's going to go through the x-axis through this intercept, come down through this uh, intercept, come up here. Now, it might go high and then come through, or it might go through and go high. We don't really know, and, but we know it's going to go through, and then eventually it's going to come back down and then go into infinity this way. And when I graph it, it's going to look something like this. Okay, see what I have it like this? Now, obviously, I don't know how high it's going to go here, and I don't know how low it's going to go there. These are uh, those are elements that we'll pick up in calculus, but in pre-calculus algebra, this about is about as best we can do. Uh, if you uh, a nice window for graphing this, by the way, is um, right here. The x if uh, the x minimum would be negative four, x maximum would be four with a scale of one, and then y minimum negative twenty and y maximum of 20, and y scale of 5. Here's the function uh, typed in again. You can stop the movie here and, and graph it in your graphing calculator and see how close this came. It's a fairly close, at least in terms of behavior. It's just that you can tell how where these uh, this minimum here is and where this maximum is.